My name is James Reid and we're here at Tappanoff Farm in Aberdeenshire in North East Scotland and as well as focusing on permaculture design um, on our small farm one of the big themes is agroforestry. Agroforestry is the purposeful integration of trees within a farming landscape be that with crops or, or with livestock. If we were to leave a field untouched it, certainly in the climate here over time it would slowly revert back to woodland and for us that's our model that we're focusing on is looking at how we can work with our small farm uh, and to slowly transform that over time into a perennial based agricultural system. A lot of the trees that we have been planting are fruit trees um, but there's a lot more reasons behind wanting to plant other perennial and, and woody species other than for food production. We often talk about the five F's of a forest garden. Um, we've got food, fuel, fodder, fibre and pharmaceuticals. That's a slightly artistic license on that last one. But that really gives you an idea of the achievements that we're asking of our trees that we're planting here on the farm. We're planting trees uh, for firewood. We heat our house using mostly wood fuel, so what, it, it's fantastic if we can try and at least get some of those wood fuel needs from our own farm. So that involves planting coppice. A lot of the trees that we work with here, if we cut them down at ground level the following year, they'll regrow again. Um, so coppice agriculture has been happening for thousands of years. It's probably one of the oldest forms of interaction that we have with forestry. It's a truly regenerative form of firewood production. So that's a big focus of ours. We're planting tree species that are perfect for feeding to our livestock, mostly the ruminants, so the goats and the sheep. These are species uh, that are rich in calcium and high in protein um, that we can either feed directly to the animals fresh or that we can cut and turn into tree hay, which is drying the branches and the leaves to then have uh, that available in the colder months of the year. We're planting trees to act as windbreaks. We're in a very exposed area here, um, quite high up the side of a hill. So um, it just makes sense to be able to plant fast growing species that are going to buffer the winds. We were planting species such as hybrid willow and hybrid poplar, which are incredibly fast growing. Um, that can shoot on up and help change the microclimate in a favourable way to make way for other species of trees that are going to last a lot longer in the timeline of this project. A lot of the tree species that we're planting are perfect for the goats to browse from. Uh, goats in their nature are browsers. Um, wild goats certainly are very good at grazing grass. One of their, they're more akin to a deer in their eating habits and one of their favourite foods, foods is, is tree fodder. So we really want to make that available. It's very important for, for the rumen that it has access to tree leaves and branches. The goats even eat the bark off of the trees. Of course this can be problematic, keeping an animal such as a goat within a wooded scenario. Through design and, and fencing we're really managing to integrate um, an animal that can be very devastating to a forest or a woodland, um, but giving them everything that they need to be f for adequate nutrients and, and to give them a, a really good life. Poultry play a really important part in the agroforestry system. We keep chickens and we keep geese. We've had ducks in the past. We currently don't have any, but they are a fantastic um, addition to, to most agroforestry systems. The chickens we move regularly in a movable hen house, um, which just means we can get them into as many different areas as possible that we need them to do some work. From a horticultural point of view, chickens are often talked about at cleaning up a garden plot, tilling the soil for you. And while we've had some success with that, we really find that they're, for us, the best result at using chickens is um, having them in these small areas of woodland, areas that are perhaps a bit difficult for us to put the sheep or the goats into, the chickens really find their niche there. If we've got an area of grazing or an area, area of pasture that maybe isn't performing so well, as got a bit too many of, of plants or weeds that we're, we're not wanting to encourage coming through the, the pasture, then we can bring the chickens in to really scratch, scratch it down almost to soil again so that we can then reseed when we, when we want to, uh, a more favorable seed mix. The geese are fantastic in an agroforestry system. A bit like the chickens, we utilize them by putting them into areas of tree plantings that are just a little bit too sensitive to have the goats or the sheep. For grass management, they're fantastic. That is their main diet is 
primarily grass, where we've been growing wood fuel coppice, which are the trees are planted at quite a tight spacing. We can't scythe in there to keep the grass down. We can't even use our mechanical scythe. The trees are, are too densely planted to allow the goats in there with, because of fear of them eating the trees. So the geese have, are just brilliant at fitting into these small, intricate tree-based systems. You do have to be careful with the geese. They have been known to nibble at some of the bark, but mostly at the times of year when the grass hasn't quite started growing enough and, and they're just looking for a food source. We've even managed to give the geese tree hay, which has been quite amazing. Um, we, we came across that purely by observing the geese. Over winter had the geese uh, in an area of the farm where they had access to a beech hedge. And obviously beech um, retains its leaves during winter. The leaves dry uh, as winter comes on and the leaves stay on the hedge. And we noticed that the geese were eating the leaves off, off the hedge and, and that is tree hay really, it's dried leaves. So, so we've, we thought, oh, can, can that be also one of our farm animals that we can supplement in their diet in winter with tree hay? As well as agroforestry methods like alley cropping, we also focus on silver pasture. Silver pasture is the integration of trees within a grazing system. One of the things that we're really wanting to try and achieve here is really utilizing every acre of land that we've got. We're a small farm, only eight acres. So um, it's very important to stack as many functions as possible, to use a permaculture term. And silver pasture to me is a, is a great example of that. We can have a field for grazing our animals in, but that field can also grow tree species for wood fuel, for food, uh, for animal feed. So a typical silver pasture system could look like a, a row of trees, whether that's on contour or going north to south, running through a field. We use electric netting and electric fencing to rotate the animals between these rows of trees. Out of all the sort of agroecological approaches to farm design and management, agroforestry is probably one of the most understood out of a lot of them. Certainly in, in Europe, agroforestry is quite an understood term. Here in the UK, I, I see more and more of it, which is great uh, getting talked about uh, and implemented. I think one way of encouraging landowners and farmers to adopt agroforestry would be to show them the benefits, uh, benefits for their livestock being more shelter, more stress reduction for their livestock with, from, from extreme winds and, and cold. I think farmers are very um, deprived of time and they want quick results and so a bit more education into specific species that are going to suit their soils and, and give them results quickly. You know, everybody has the concept that trees take a long time to grow, and a lot of them do, but we've got some very fast growing species that we can adopt that help build soils, that protect livestock from winds. And I, I think it's just increasing the knowledge is definitely something that we need to do. More demonstration sites showing agroforestry. We're very interested in demonstrating the um, small holding or, or croft scale agroforestry. Um, I think that's something that's not looked into that much. There's a lot of focus on self-sufficiency with regards to vegetable production and rearing livestock. Um, I would love it to see a little bit more focus on uh, understanding on how to uh, design um, a small farm that can be a bit more resilient with wood fuel and uh, producing fodder for their animals. Um, and I think that's a really interesting area to look into, is the, is the home scale and small farm agroforestry. But I'm pretty positive. I think I, think I see a lot more uh, and hear a lot more people talking about the use of trees on a farm scale and, and hopefully that will increase. So here on, on our um, eight acres, we've got um, silver pasture, the integration of trees in grazing. We've got forest gardens, which are these multi-strata, multi-layer mixed orchards. We've got hedgerows. We have riparian agroforestry, where we're planting trees around our ponds and our ditches. Coppice agriculture, pollards. This, these are all different examples of agroforestry. And we're managing to practice and demonstrate all of those within this small area.